We are the Columbus Chew. This is our Week 5 matchup versus Gym Leader Geo and the San Francisco Giantes. The Columbus Chew are currently 0-4 and they are looking for their first victory in the GBA. Will that come at the hands of Gym Leader Geo? Or will we suffer, suffer our fifth defeat in a row? You saw the teams in the matchup screen. Coach C decides to lead with Celebi. Ruin. Believing that he can set up rocks or U-turn out. It would be an ideal lead. Unfortunately, B unit, the Rabami, is led by Gym Leader Geo. This forces Coach Z to switch out, fearing the possible bug buzz or pollen puff. Geo predicts the switch into the Exadrill and goes for what is believed to be a hidden power fighting, an excellent first turn prediction. Coach Z goes for the poison jab and Toxapex is switched in, revealing that it has Rocky Helmet. Exadrill will go for an Earthquake, thinking it would be able to pick up the KO. It is not. Exadrill will fall to the Scald. Gym Leader Geo takes an early 6-5 lead, knocking out one of the crucial pieces to the team of the Columbus Chew. Next comes out Blaziken. Not thinking that Gym Leader Geo would want to switch in something that is four times weak to a stab attack, the Columbus Chew choose to pick Earthquake. It does about 25 to 30 percent damage and the Toxapex is switched back out, getting it that Regenerator ability. It takes a small amount of damage from the Flare Blitz, but it is burned in the process. After many turns of After Effects, Blaziken will go for the Earthquake, and claim a kill on this Toxapex, which would be a thorn in the side for the remainder of the team. Next, Gym Leader Geo sends out Haxorus. Haxorus has a Mold Breaker ability and will go for a Z move. Coach Z did not want Gym Leader Geo to get up a free Dragon Dance or Substitute and opted to stay in and attack. The Z move is revealed and it is Acid Downpour. This was no doubt for the event of Clefable being brought. Now that the Z move is out of the way and Blaziken has gone down, the Columbus Shoe can continue on knowing that that is not coming in the future. Manaphy goes for an Ice Beam, getting solid damage on the Haxorus. Haxorus stays in and goes for a Dragon Dance. Knowing that nothing wants to switch in and take a plus one Outrage, that is what Gym Leader Geo goes for. The Outrage is more than enough at plus one to one-hit KO the Manaphy. Retribution is an easy switch in here and can revenge kill with Ice Shard, which it does. Ice Shard takes out the Haxorus and Sneasel racks up a kill. Out comes out the Scizor and the Sneasel is switched out, and Ampharos is brought in. Scizor will Mega Evolve, and you turn out. Because Ampharos has not Mega Evolved, it still has the Static ability, and as you will see, it comes into play, paralyzing this Mega Scizor. 
which is excellent and greatly reduces its ability to set up and sweep. Rabombi comes back out, not wanting to take a super effective fairy hit. Ampharos is left unmega evolved, and unfortunately, it is not able to bulk the Moonblast. Celebi comes out, still fully expecting to take a bug move, which it is revealed that Gym Leader Geo does not have on this Rabombi. And at this point in the match, he sets up a Quiver Dance, uh, just wanting damage on this Rabombi is why the Sucker Punch came out the first turn. Had it been known that this did not have a bug move, going for a Zen Headbutt that turn would have put this in an easily revengeable range for Sneasel to come out and kill with the Ice Shard as it does nearly 50% damage, the Zen Headbutt would have put it well below that. Unfortunately, the Quiver Dance was revealed and it was found out later in the game that Gym Leader Geo did not have the bug type attack on his Rabombi. But that is the match. The Columbus Chew lose 4-0 to the San Francisco Giantes. This does not deter us from our goals of exposing and revealing the evil in the GBA to its fans and bringing light and redemption to those who wish to see it. We are the Columbus Jew.